The world is so full of a number of things, I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. It seems fitting to begin the story of Mr. World with the words of Robert Louis Stevenson, the famous writer and world traveler. For now, you have a world of your own, filled with more wonders than you ever dreamed of. Turn your globe slowly and watch its countries, islands, and oceans fly beneath you as though you were an astronaut miles and miles above the Earth. Your replogal globe is a miniature model of the Earth itself. Because it's round, like the Earth, it shows us who all our neighbors are. Look straight down at the North Pole. Isn't that a surprising view of the world? Notice how many great countries form a circle around the pole. See how close we are to Northern Europe and Asia. Alaska, our vast 49th state, almost touches the coast of Russia. The Bering Strait between is only 56 miles wide. Pretend you're flying from Chicago to Tokyo over Alaska. We have a habit of saying Japan is in the Far East, but you can see now that Japan is really near west from us. Doesn't your globe give you a new idea of directions? Now look at the United States and Canada, and you'll see that they're almost the same size. On one of the best known flat maps, called a Mercator map, Canada looks twice as large as the United States, and Greenland looks larger than South America, though your globe shows you that Greenland is much smaller than Brazil. Because your globe is round like the Earth, it shows the true sizes and shapes of countries. Listen now to the thrilling sound of the space age. Three, two, one, fire. Here's an exciting way to use your globe. Track the path of the astronaut as he orbits the Earth in 88 minutes. Use a crayon on the glossy globe surface. It'll wipe off. Follow the spaceman as he swings into orbit over Bermuda, sails above the Atlantic and over the heart of Africa, zooms across the Indian Ocean and over Australia five miles a second, then speeds above the blue Pacific, home to the United States. And here's something mighty interesting. Even the astronaut is using a globe in his space capsule to pinpoint his position at all times. It's fun to find places you study about or hear about in the news. But there's so much more your globe can tell you about our world. All the lines and symbols on it have a meaning. Look at the lines running east and west around the globe. Then notice the lines that cross them and run from the north to the south pole. They're like streets in your city because they help us find places on Earth. We call them lines of latitude and longitude. You may be surprised to know that they were invented by the ancient Greeks over 2,000 years ago. When you read your book, The Story of the Globe, you'll discover all the fascinating uses of these important lines and symbols. Because it's a true likeness, let's imagine that your globe really is the Earth. Like all planets, Earth is a great traveler. In fact, Planet is the Greek word for wanderer. The Earth is like a spinning top that never runs down. It spins very fast, over a thousand miles an hour at the equator. And as it spins, it keeps moving around the sun at the amazing speed of 19 miles a second. Mr. World's trip is a long one, 600 million miles. It takes him a little over 365 days to make one journey around the sun. That's how the year got its length. It's hard to realize we're traveling with the Earth at such terrific speed. If you were going 80 miles an hour in a train, you'd feel you were traveling very fast because buildings and telegraph poles would flash by as you looked out the window. But we can't feel Earth's motion because all things around us are moving at the same speed even the air we breathe. 
Maybe you're wondering what keeps Mr. World from bumping into the sun or taking a wrong direction. Well, there are two wonderful laws in the universe that work like a tug of war to keep the Earth in orbit. One is called gravity. Throw a ball up into the air and you'll see how gravity pulls it down so you can catch it. No one knows what gravity really is. It's one of the unsolved mysteries of the universe. The sun, the planets, and even the moon have the pulling power of gravity. The bigger a thing is, the greater its pull. Earth moves so fast, it would fly out into space in a straight line if it weren't for the pull of the sun. Earth's speed creates an opposite pull that equals the pull of the sun. This is the other law, and it's called centrifugal force. Space scientists call it the G-force. And that's a clue to the way scientists are using these laws now. When a spaceship travels at just the right speed, five miles a second, and high enough above the Earth, the inner pull of gravity and the outer pull of centrifugal force become equal, and the astronaut stays in orbit around the Earth. The spinning Earth is always turning a new face toward the sun. This makes time different all over the world. Here's a game you can play to watch a day grow around the Earth. Have someone represent the sun by shining a flashlight at your globe while you darken the room. Turn the globe so North and South America are facing your imaginary sun. Now it's daytime in this part of the world while the other half is in darkness. Keep turning your globe slowly from west to east the way the Earth really turns. See the sun come to Hawaii, then Asia, Europe, and Africa. In 24 hours, the Earth has made one full turn, the time it takes the sun to complete its round-the-world visit. Now you see why the clock was invented. Our wonderful old Earth is responsible for the way we measure time. Your globe has a special clock that tells you what time it is anywhere in the world. It's the black and white dial over the North Pole. If you set the dial at 9 o'clock in the morning in Chicago, you'll find it's 3 o'clock in London, and it's midnight in Japan. Here's another of Earth's mysteries. Your globe tips at an angle, just the way the Earth is tipped. If the Earth were straight up and down, the sun would strike all parts of it the same way year around. We'd always have the same season, and days and nights would always be the same length. Life might get very dull for some of us if we could never look forward to the joys of winter. See spring come with returning birds. Enjoy the long days of summer, or thrill to the glorious colors of autumn. Earth is the only home we've ever known, and it seems very big and important to us. Its surface, almost 200 million square miles, would hold 65 countries the size of the United States. But do you know the sun is 12,000 times larger than Earth? And Earth isn't the largest planet. Eight other planets revolve around the sun, all different sizes and distances away. They're all members of one big family called the solar system, with the sun at the head of the family. And scientists tell us that the universe contains thousands and thousands of solar systems. Our closest neighbor, only 240,000 miles away, is the moon, which circles the Earth once about every 28 days. Someday, when we travel to other planets, the moon will be a good stopping off place. The moon is much smaller than Earth, and its gravity much weaker. You could jump six times higher on the moon. But because the moon is so close, we feel its gravity. It works like a magnet, pulling the tides in our oceans. Twice a day, our oceans rise and fall because of the moon's gravity.
Scientists say some of us will learn to live on the moon, but it won't be very comfortable. For one thing, the moon has no air. The first astronauts will have to walk around in spacesuits and carry oxygen with them. As more astronauts come, they'll build bases filled with air that can always be kept at the same temperature. This is important because the days are two weeks long and temperatures rise higher than 200 degrees. When night comes, it also lasts two weeks, with the temperature plunging to 200 degrees below zero. And the moon is a lonely place filled with huge deep craters and jagged mountains higher than those on Earth, with no grass or trees anywhere, not a living thing. So far as anyone knows, the Earth is the only world with all the right ingredients to support man. Three billion of us, in fact, along with half a million different kinds of animals and a quarter of a million species of plants. Earth has just the right atmosphere and its distance from the sun, 93 million miles, gives us just the right temperature and amount of light. Chances are we wouldn't want to trade it for any other planet. Earth speaks in many voices. Listen. There's the gentle sound of ocean surf. And here's a familiar sound, a spring rain. Earth has angry voices too when it speaks in hurricanes. Volcanoes. Earthquakes. But there is one voice that has never been heard before, the voice of old Mr. World himself, the way he might sound if he could speak to us in our own language. Mr. World, how was this wonderful orderly earth of ours formed in the first place? And how long has it been going on? I am the earth the planet you call home. Scientists believe I'm at least four and a half billion years old, but no man yet knows my true age. How did I begin? Many scientists think I was once part of the sun, that another star approached too close, and the masses which broke off became planets. Others believe I started as a spinning ball of flaming gas. I grew cooler and changed into a boiling, bubbling liquid. Ages went by before I cooled enough to form a crust on my surface. But I was still very, very hot inside. Liquid fire burst through my crust, breaking it up into rocks that shot high in the air and collided in a boiling mass. It took millions of years before my crust finally became a solid surface. Gradually, it grew thicker, rising and folding to form mountains, hills, and valleys. Heavy clouds closed me in, hiding the face of the sun, and a deluge of rain fell for thousands of years, forming my streams, rivers, and seas. At last the rain was over. I felt the rays of the sun. Then came the winds, and all the forces that gave me weather and climate. Rocks hold the secrets of my past. Search them to learn the events that shaped my history. How long will I live? How long will the sun live? I do not know. 
Only the great creator of the world and universe knows the answer. And a million years is as a day in his sight.